Hello everybody and welcome back to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Shaddy Zeddy Hanna and I have the absolute pleasure of being able to host tonight's match for all of you today here. The Nace Star League Keanu Esports versus Oklahoma Christian University. For those of you that you know are joining us on stream again here for maybe the second or third time this week, that name might sound familiar to you. And it's because this is literally the second time in a row we are playing OCU. We got matched up against them in Overwatch and COD. And we also, they were in our bracket over the weekend for Landshark. So we just can't seem to get enough of these guys. Played them earlier this season in Valorant where we were able to take the win. And last night, Overwatch took the loss as well. So for our tiebreaker here is going to be the toughest one of them all, of course, which is Call of Duty as OCU recently did just win the Landshark 2023 5K, hosted by Ole Miss. Um, and they are a top-rated school. They're pretty strong for Call of Duty. So this is going to be uh, uh, an interesting one to watch for sure. It'll be a good opportunity to see, you know, how the Huskies can handle, <clears throat> you know, that top talent, that uh, um, that lo high level of competition for COD. I'm going to switch over to my headphones here as well. As we're just about to get into things for tonight. There we go. Now I look like a gamer. I got my gamer gear on. So we're about to get started with our match here as the players are set up with the lobby. And our very first match of the night will take place on Embassy. We will be beginning with the hard points here. Gonna switch over to the game and take us into hard point on Embassy. And here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me for that. We're just about to get started here with our first match of the day, Keanu Huskies taking on OCU. The Huskies on the side of Keanu, we've got Kurz, Brody, Exelios, and Shoku playing tonight. Coach Trix and Great Witness, of course, will be out on the sidelines for today, just supporting the boys in their attempt to take down OCU. And Brody finds first blood on Prada with a nice little headshot here by Truck. Cruz is going to try to shoot for his toes here. We're going to switch over and see what the rest of the Huskies are doing as Kurz and Gus are getting into a little game of hide and seek up here. <clears throat> and so far, neither team really taking confident control of the space, but, you know, as I say that, Cruz will find two. Gus will find a third as well, and OCU will be the first to touch. As we mentioned, you know, OCU, a very strong team with a lot of legacy in the Call of Duty space. Tonight is really about seeing what the Huskies can get done and how much damage they can deal here in tonight's match. It'll be a good opportunity for them to, to test their mettle against those of the OCU Eagles. And so far the Huskies, they're falling down in points, but they're finding important kills when they matter. While OCU transitions to this next point spawn, we'll see if the Huskies can finally start to get themselves on the scoreboard. As Shoku will take down Gus from behind. The SMG is going to stick some shots onto Frosty. No good, though. And OCU will walk away with the second point now here. <coughs> Cruz and Kurz get into it. That's a fun one to, to, to talk through. And Cruz will get the best of Kurz in that 1v1. OCU starting to run away with the points lead a little bit here. <coughs> Huskies need to try to touch. And Exelios will find a big opening pick. Cruz will get spotted out. But he will be able to get the best of Brody as Kurz turns his attention over. Makes the read on Frosty but doesn't take the shot and Frosty beats him to it. And Keanu, it feels like they're making all the right reads. They're just doing them slowly. They know where they should be, or at least they have an idea of where they should be. It's about taking the time to actually line it up. You can see here is Kurz, you know, really trying to get that kill, but he's just not able to stick those shots to the concrete. All I want to see, you know, as a Huskies fan, a Huskies, you know, a fellow Husky myself, all I want to see... Just taking that extra time to make sure that that strat you have 
You know, you've thought it through. But then once you find that gunfight, once you put yourself in that position, there's absolutely no hesitation. You just go, go, go. OCU about 100 points away from victory here on the hard point, and the Huskies are yet to touch. But they can and should find their way onto site here as Kurz tries to jump through. He's going to get beaten up by Frosty on doorway, though. That's going to be Prada holding it down. Nice shots from Brody. But OCU, they have this really like good trade setup where as soon as one of their teammates goes down, there's another guy there just ready <coughs> to trade that. They've got a very good read on the game. They know roughly where people are going. But the Huskies here, looks like they might have found themselves in a good opener as they are able to take down Cruz very early on. Shoku goes big for two. Well, it's too bad that we missed that. That's a massive entry from Shoku. And that should let the Huskies get onto the point here and finally... They're building some score, but Cruz actually getting the best of him. No way OCU claims it. And OCU, despite going down three members very early on in that fight, gets themselves onto the point. Kiana will finally touch the point. And avoid a shutout. And now that they have positional control, let's see what they do with it. Let's see how they hold it. Ah, uh, Kurz tries to make the read on to Cruz, but Cruz was wary. Fool me once, shame on you. You won't fool me again. <clears throat> Keanu now. Need to find another entry. We saw Shoku come up big for them last time. We'll see. Will it be Brody to make the opening maneuver here for the Huskies as this next hill starts to spawn? We are back to P1 in the rotation. P1, arguably the hardest point to control on Embassy. Gus spotted out, but Kurz can't stick the shots. He's going to run his way out of there as the nade does come through. And it's good. Nice shots from Exelios. Cruz gets spotted out by Kurz as well, and the Huskies actually did a pretty decent job there of getting control. Unfortunately, it's on the one point where you can't really convert. So despite having a nice play and being able to get control of that site, it's not going to translate to much as no one really likes to be on hill at this point. And you can, you can see why, because it's so exposed. You're, you're, you're susceptible to high ground pressure. You're susceptible to window pressure. There's a straight line angle as well. It's difficult to get and retain control on P1. Now as we move over to P2, Shoku will find an opening pick on the Prada. And the Huskies will break 30 points here. I don't want to see comeback season yet. We'll say comeback season when we hit 150. Until then, it's... It's just putting points on the board. Up shots here, and the Huskies need to touch. There's only 10 points remaining. Before the map ends, Prada spotted out. Good shots from Exelios, but the shot comes through in return. And I don't think the Huskies will be able to touch here, and that it's going to be OCU taking map number one. Hard point here on Embassy. And as we watch that final kill there, we'll see what the scoreboard has to share with us. And 23 kills for both Cruz and Frosty alike. I mean, these are both very talented players for sure. It's a strong start for them in the match. And I'm proud of the Huskies though, because they were able to get on, you know, after... It, it was looking like it was going to be a shutout at first, to be honest. And the Huskies said, no, we're not going to get embarrassed like that. We're putting in the work. We, we, we can fight when it matters and we'll... We'll do a little something. We'll show that we still got that fight in the spirit. And they did. But to me, it was really just a matter of... Slowing down that assessment, that fight assessment. To make sure that you're picking a good fight. And then once you've picked a good fight, 
commit to taking it. It was a lot of hesitation once those uh, once they started taking those engagements. A lot of hesitation on committing or fi- trying to find the best position. And it's it's no. It's like once you once you peek your head up and you start getting shot at, you you can't really run away and and try to reset it. You gotta just commit to your battles, take them down. <clears throat> but it's hard in the heat of the moment. Very easy for me up in my little high tower to say, oh, just do this, just do that. It's not easy, especially when you're under the pressure that the Huskies are here. This OCU game going into this, we knew this was going to be tough. Next match of the season is going to be basically the last chance to secure LCQs for the Huskies. So the Huskies Call of Duty team does actually still have the chance to qualify for playoffs in NACE. You know, today is going to be a tough match, as we've already determined. But next week will be their final attempt decider to qualify and progress the playoffs. So you know you know they're going to want the best results they can find for themselves. Between today and tomorrow, or today and next week, I should say. The players are just setting up for the lobby now. And i got to do a little finagling on my end, because I'm running the stream here as well for you all tonight. So I'm going to cut to a quick break while we wait for the lobby to get set up. We'll be right back with some more Call of Duty in just a few minutes. Hello everybody and welcome back to the KNF Esports stream. My name is Shadi Zeddy Hanna and I have the pleasure of casting tonight's Oklahoma Christian University match. This is the Nay Star League Varsity Premier West Conference Week 6. Kano Huskies take on the OCU Eagles. And I just figured out how to make Codcaster show the map score so you guys don't have to spam me in the Twitch chat asking for it anymore. We got it. We're there. I'm kidding, of course. I always love having people in the chat asking questions, talking about the game, sharing about the game. And we appreciate having you all here. 
tuning in to support the Huskies in tonight's match. As I mentioned to those of you that were here for map number one, it is obviously an important match, but there will still be a chance to qualify. You know, regardless of the outcome of today, the Huskies are still up for playoff qualification. It will be an LCQ run regardless. They will have to make it through last chance qualifiers. But the goal is to give themselves as much, as much of an opportunity as possible to do so. Is that Cruz holding a sniper on offense on SND? They're planting bomb and he's got a sniper. Oh man, Kurz in the 1v1 against Prada. Is he gonna stick the defuse? He's gonna try! And Kurz is gonna get it as he finds the wall bang onto Prada that gives him just enough time to get the defuse down. And Kerr is kicking things off nice and strong here with the first round SND against Oklahoma Christian University. It's a nice shot from him to clean it up. The wall bang through the wooden beam. Boom. Bye. See you later. Huskies now on the attack <clears throat> on the search and destroy. And these teams really seem to like going for this A site. They want to get set up on it. I suppose it is a little easier than that B site because these spawns are a little awkward on this map. And the nade kill comes out onto Brody very early. That's an unfortunate way to die start things off but sometimes that nade placement is just too good curse here just creeping up trying to break this ocu defensive formation but look at what they've got going on for themselves like this is like a firing squad almost they got one body two body three body four bodies just holding each other like a big old group hug curse will spot out frosty Gus will take down the bomb carry, and that will be a clean defense for o OCU as they hold the Huskies in place and lock them down on the site. And I almost want to say, like, in those moments, it's very difficult to make that read, of course, but I almost want to say, you see OCU, they're not moving, they're not taking any space, you're watching your flanks, you're not hearing anything. Do you ever just go B? Like, maybe this is the Valorant in me talking, but I feel like You've kind of, kind of, sort of isolated where they have to be based off of that opening pick onto Brody. There's got to be some opportunity to change it up. And speaking of changing it up, OCU will make the run to B. We can see Xelios here is going to start rotating over. As OCU will find the first blood of the round as Shoku and Kerr is going to take it down. Prada goes big for a second onto Brody and... Yeah, they didn't take that first round very lightly, I don't feel. They, it's two sweeps back to back. Xelios just caught holding the wrong angle at the wrong time as Frosty will clean it up. <coughs> Some good shots from him. Keanu now back on the offense. I like this knife skin curse. That's nice. Little little zebra print blade. Uh, Cruz will find a very early sniper shot onto Brody. And tries to peek for a second one. And Cruz will get it. The second I turn around, Cruz. Should we just give him three headshots? I think we just gave him three headshots. Or three sniper shots at least. One of them was a headshot. They're going to try to feed it to him. Does he get it? I couldn't tell if they got it or not. Did he get the quick scope? He did. Hey, good on you, buddy.
Let's see how OCU does here in this next round. How they switch up or modify their attack. And it looks like they are going to make their way back to this B side. Actually, they're going to take a bloody gunfight down middle as Curse jumps out and takes down Frosty. Good shots, good play from him. And Brody gets caught up by Prada, but he knows, at least, he's been able to identify where OC is standing. Exelios and Brody come up big. And Cruz gets tagged out. They have the bomb on site. 50 seconds remaining for him. And I think the Huskies know he's going to do some weird wraparound play. So look at Brody with the setup here. He's just watching the staircase. Exelio is just going to hold from behind Statue. He's going to go out and peek it. And Cruz is just... Ah. Cruz is, Cruz is dropping a Cruz missile. Well, I suppose that would be what Cruz would do. It would be a very cruise thing to drop a cruise missile, but it's no good. And Brody, reading out in the play, splitting up from the streak kill. While not totally aware of Cruz's position, will correct in time, takes the shots, knocks him down, boom, look at him go. Huskies actually on the board here, two to three in the SND. You know, I, I shouldn't sound surprised. SND is really the map where the Huskies shine. This is their map type. You know, it's the map type that they seem to have the most confidence and the most success on all season. Their coach, Coach Tricks, is a very analytical coach. He's got a lot of knowledge about, you know, the strategies and tactics. And this is one of the maps where your strats and tactics really matter more. Not more than any of the other maps, but they definitely matter a lot. Brody, yeah, you, I was going to say that. Barely your gun sticking out. He knows exactly where you are. Nice shots from Exelios. Curse. Still alive as well. 2v2 now for the Huskies. And they've done a good job of evening that out for themselves. Cruz knows Cruz is close. But he doesn't know quite exactly where he is. Ooh, and that nade might be enough information for Cruz to know. Yeah, it tells him he's not looking in the right spot. Cruz will take his timing and swing. And I think Exelio saw Gus on that. He's going to try to go hunt out Cruz. Who's repositioned himself here. Exelius will see him. He sees Gus as well. And he's caught in the middle. Caught in between two. I almost liked that from him. I was close. It's a good little effort to burst through the doorway there and try to get your shots off. Yeah, but Cruz seemed to have a pretty good idea. It's one of those things about Call of Duty. Just knowing your angles, knowing where people are going to be, when they're going to be there, how long it's going to take them. It's... It, it, one of the more fascinating things about tactical shooters is is that map awareness, just that pure game sense. It's always intrigued me. <clears throat> An OCU will hit the electric boogaloo as they go A to B to B to A. They're playing ABBA. Brody will find the opening pick of the round. And Prada's going to try to find two, but to no avail, he gets Exelios. Curz will take down one, and the Huskies on defense are looking mighty fine. Cruz, the last alive, and he's taken down by Exelios. And Keanu just looks devastating on these defensive rounds. They're going to wait, I believe. Oh, everybody's tactical gear is up. They're just uh, sitting up for a group meeting. A little tea party on the bomb. I was trying to think of a good ABBA song for that pun, but I couldn't come up with anything good. I'm sorry. Voulez-vous like to hit A-Site again? I don't know. That was kind of bad. Oh, good. We'll stick to commentating Call of Duty and we'll leave the puns to the experts. Keanu. Four to, three to four on the SND. Not the scoreline I think people were anticipating from this matchup. But I'm not surprised in the slightest. Okay, I don't know. There's a sniper on site. Gus will weed him out with the grenade. The frag comes good.
Justin, those were curses. Yeah, he's certain to shoot him through the wall, like. This is a tough spot for the Huskies here. Down one man, or two man already. They know where the bomb is. I, I, I kind of just want to see them commit to a full map rotation. Some crazy movement from Shoku. I just want to see them commit to this full flank. Like, this bomb is going to be diff very difficult to recover from this position. But currently, actually, OCU is not holding it. And Prodigy is taken down, but I don't think they're going to know Cruz is in that corner as well. And Cruz actually comes up with the... He just got a pistol 2k? Let me see that again. Show me that back. What in the heck? Okay. There you go. X12. Can we GA that gun? Too broken. This guy just got a pistol 2k. That's Cruz's 13th kill of the round. And Keanu now needs to lock down their defense. If they can win defense and one offense, they'll be back to back on defense. And defense has been their best half. So losing that last attacking round does kind of suck. But if they are able to win the next two rounds... Nope, I lied. They will be back to offense. They got to win two offensive rounds now from their position here. See how the Huskies can do it. Prada on the pick onto Shoku and he's going to start running. Xelio spots him out. But Brody, it's one man against the world. And he finds one. Can he find two? You may not be able to win it now, but can you bruise their egos at least? Unfortunately, no. OCU will take the round and a 6-3 victory in favor of the Eagles on the SND. A well-fought defense, though, from the Huskies. They put on some really good rounds. Pretty good, pretty good work here from the Huskies as they did their best to try to dent into that OCU aggression on SND. And like, I mean, their setups were really, really challenging to break through. Because you're not just talking about having good gunplay or good strategic sense. You're talking about really, really understanding the map type as well, like setting up for the map. And in COD, there's so much map variance because you're not just playing on different maps with different angles, but also different objectives. And those objectives change how you play those angles. So on SND, you know, you're playing for really tight spatial control, whereas Hardpoint, you might be playing for uh, more controlling respawns. And where does your positioning matter? What gunfights do you take? Where or when? There's so much depth and complexity to this game that you just wouldn't know if you didn't dive into it and... To see teams be able to develop some mastery or understanding in that area has always been a treat to watch. It's been great seeing the Huskies so far on their journey. Last year, qualified CCL playoffs. This year, the future of CCL, though, unknown. The Huskies will be doing their best to make their dent in the Nace Darling Varsity Premier Seasons, hopefully making the playoffs this season and pushing for a strong CXP and they start league season in the winter. We're just waiting for the players to get the lobby set up for game number three, so we'll cut to a quick break. Or we'll wait for some more information on that. We'll be back with match number three. The control on <laughs> hotel. I had to find it for you. Control on hotel right after the break.
everybody, and welcome back to the Kano Esports stream. Coming to you live. On control, on hotel, Kiano takes on Oklahoma Christian University in the Star League West Conference Varsity Premier Division. Hope that's not too much of a mouthful for you. Husky starting on attack here on the control. And we'll see what they get done here. As they are going to begin to approach that B side. Kurz. Interesting little encounter there with Frosty. And Shoki will to get the refrag down. Cruz spotted out as well. Kiano. Going to do what they can to get established here on the point. As Gus is spotted out. And Husky's actually finding some pretty big kills very early on in this one. Stun Grenade comes out from Frosty. He's going to be able to make the jump across. Brody's just going to try to hold him as the wall frag. The wall bang kill goes through. And Kurz trying to put some pressure down. Nice shots from Kurz. He finds two. We'll get taken down by Frosty, but Shoku will get him back and return. And the Huskies have full control of this B side. That started in pushing over to A, but Prada will shut it down as he jumps in and takes down both Exelios and Brody. Huskies, complete control of the B side. A good start here for Keanu as they are holding a respawn advantage currently. And we're able to take that entire B side. Now unfortunately, it won't mean anything if they can't complete the A hit. But they're going to get started now. Ashoku able to find a good shot here on the flank. And a nice little play from Brody. Means that the Huskies have virtually opened up this entire A side. They're actually going to be playing for lives... And trying to limit rotations, but Cruz gets the best of them with the SMG. The Huskies, they had full control of the A side, and they tried to play aggressive, tried to play for kills. Tried to cut OCU off. But they lost their gunfights, and now Oklahoma Christian have managed to swing the health pool in their favor. As Keanu went from looking like they were in complete control of the state of the match to looking a little bit disin uh, disfragmented right now. Brody will switch over to the SMG and takes down Frosty. Finds another one there. Free firing. Peaks up just a second too early as Prada will catch him. And the Huskies now only six lives remaining. You know, we've talked about this concede one side strategy before and what it does to the total life pool. And the Huskies starting to face the brunt of that now with no respawns remaining and only 30 seconds left. Huskies need to pull a miracle here to swing this one. They started off looking so good and they still have a chance, but they need to do it flawlessly now. Shoku goes down as well. Kurz and Exelios against the world. 14 seconds left. Frosty gonna peek it. He's gonna get taken down by Kurz. Exelios gonna try. Kurz finds a second one. If he can find this third, Gus gets him down. And Keanu very nearly coming up huge here in this first round against OCU, but OCU will shut him down. <coughs> we'll see how OCU crafts their attacking half here in just a moment. As they are going to make the push for this B side. Prada will find an opening pick onto Kurz. And Brody will take out Cruz on the back end here. Now Keanu does like to play that little conceded game. And I think Exelio saw that the site got tapped by Frosty. He does, but he swung his crosshair. He didn't take the peak enough time. He should have just trusted his gut a little bit more. And as soon as that pick comes down on A, the entire B-side defense collapses. Huskies taken off. And I think they're just going to hedge their bets, cut their losses, and force their way onto this A-side here. Oh, it looks like there's been two disconnects from the lobby. Well, that's not supposed to happen. I'm not quite sure what the protocol is here. 
But it looks like two players have disconnected from the lot. I was wondering why things looked so strange. I'm gonna try to find out about this. And um, they will get the zone capture. Oh, it looks like the internet went out on campus. Excellent. So we're going to cut back to me for a moment. I'm getting some notifications from players now that the internet just went out on campus. So we're going to try to figure out what's going on there. Waiting to hear back from my Call of Duty coach. And they, they will restart, I believe it's a portion of the lobby, or they give that round over so they just play the third round. So we're going to have to clarify some of those things. And once we get some information on that, we'll be sure to keep you updated and informed on what's going on. I apologize for the delay here, ladies and gentlemen, but while we sort out this technical issue, we will cut to a quick break. Thank you so much for your patience, and we'll be right back with some more Call of Duty in just a few minutes.
We are back. We are ready. We are here. <laughs> Control. On hotel. Keanu Huskies versus Oklahoma Christian University. It was indeed an internet outage issue. I'm going to stop turning the stream back on. Just kidding. We're going to get started with our game in just a moment here. It looks like they were just defaulting the round to start. Oh, they forgot to set up the pre-round. <laughs> so because we came off of that technical difficulty on the last map, the uh, Oklahoma Christian University is owed a round to begin the match. But it looks like they forgot to add it into the lobby. And now I'm seeing Kurz's character model just running in a straight line through the map on my end. This is uh, definitely interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with Call of Duty servers today. We're having some fun. And now I've lost connection to the host. Cool. Yeah, COD is... um. It's one of those games where I feel like I just got the weirdest technical bugs. And you'd think for, out of all the games we play, where four four out of five of the like nationally recognized PR supported titles are free to play, the one that you spend ninety dollars just to access would be the least buggy. Right? Like that's 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 what you'd think. But it turns out they're not bugs, they're added premium features. That's what you're paying for. You're paying to have your lobbies crash. I think, that's my theory. I couldn't really explain to you else why else it costs $90 to play this video game. Added premium features. In any case. We will resume our match in just a moment here as they're speed running the lobby setup. And we're just gonna make doubly sure. That everybody is set up and good to go. Oh, what's wrong? That should be good. Excellent. Everybody is in their positions. The score is properly aligned. We're ready to go. We're waiting for the host, and we should have some Call of Duty in a second. Let's hope. In any case, while we wait for this to get started, do a quick little update on the rest of our teams and how they're doing currently. Keanu Overwatch team, brand new addition to the roster, for those of you that are a fan of Overwatch, is continuing their run in the NECC Champions Division tomorrow night at, I believe, 8.30 p.m. It's their start time. It just got recently adjusted. And we will be streaming that on the main page. And the Valorant team currently playing in Nace right now, sporting a four to zero record, looking to extend that. Sorry, a five to zero record, looking to extend that to four. Try and extend it to five. I knew I had it right. In tonight's match against the University of Central Oklahoma, so we're taking on the entire state of Oklahoma tonight. And we'll be sure to provide you with an update on that game once it finishes off stream later today. But enough about those other games. Let's get back to our favorite $90 video game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Keanu Huskies versus Oklahoma Christian University. We are back and we are finally getting to play here as Keanu looks to make a defense here. Now it won't show on the scoreboard, unfortunately. There's no system in COD to replace this. It's not a tournament client. But OCU does currently lead the series 1-0. They won the first round before the lobby. The first lobby was broken. So they only need to win two more rounds to take the map. Keanu has to reverse. Well, I shouldn't say reverse sweep. They've got to take three in a row. The Huskies now looking to show that their defense can be just as strong as their offense. And hopefully better as their offensive attempt was so very close. The defense so far looking pretty solid as the Huskies, you know, committing to conceding that first point. 
And then it's trying to play the life advantage on the second one there. Force of the Exelios either late to react or lagging. I, it, it wasn't quite clear what that what the cause for that was, but that gunfight looked a little suspicious to be sure. And OCU so far. You know, they were happy that that first site got conceded, but they're even happier that they're winning the second one. And after a strong start on the A side take, OCU will walk onto the B site and claim complete control. Taking the round and putting themselves on map point. <clears throat> and what I love about control is how dynamic of a game mode is, how you're constantly switching up what's happening, what you're playing for, what your objectives are, what your milestones are. But I feel like when you take that gamble of giving up one site and playing your lives on that second one, you really need to make sure those first few fights go your way. Otherwise, you're putting yourself in just that situation where, you know, you're basically giving your opponents the freebie if you don't make a good, strong defensive opening. And that, I'm going to be honest, that looks straight like lag. Kerr's just running through that. Didn't pull out his gun until six seconds too late. They will get taken down. The Huskies will find a few kills here. The melee kill coming up from Cruz on the Shoku. I, I don't know what's happening. There's some funky stuff going on in these lobbies right now, folks. This is just, just a tad bit silly. Look at this rotation from Cruz, though. He's gotten himself completely behind the Huskies, but he starts shooting a little too early. And while he does manage to find Kurz, Shoku will push him on a great timing there, and the Huskies will get set up on this A-side. And they're going to watch the jump around, but a nice shot from Shoku there. Just to hold it down and keep it clean. And I think the Huskies will get control of this. But they're just going to... They're just going to abandon the site and start rotating here in a moment. Let's try to figure out what's the best plan of attack. How do we get where we want to be? That's a good good awareness from Brody to know that somebody's holding that. <clears throat> Goes to get tagged. I'm going to throw out the trophy system as well, but the sprays come through and Frosty will find them. And right now, OCU is doing a great job of not just finding these kills, but also controlling these spawn locations for the Huskies. There's only a handful of places they could go. And they've got them trapped in a blender spawn here. Look at this. This is crazy. The OCU have their spawns just trapped right now. For those of you that might not be familiar with this aspect of competitive Call of Duty, I've mentioned it a couple times on stream before, but to put it in clear and simple terms, Curse is the last alive. That's the simplest I can put it, is that the OCU... Made him do that. That's that's competitive Call of Duty is is being made to want to blow yourself up with a grenade. They had a great trap set up on the outside where they they forced the Huskies basically into respawning into specific locations, and they found it off of that. They got their win, nice and easy, from that. And as I mentioned before, OCU, since they started off with a round win, they will take rounds two and three and close out the map off of that. That was a really, really fantastic show of strength there towards the latter half of that round, being able to isolate those spawns and, and punish the Huskies for getting caught out in that position. It's a brilliant maneuver, actually, to find that positional structure, that 2-2. Two -two. Have two people on both sides and crunch a lot of depth to respawns and respawn and strategy behind respawns on cod and you know if you're you're getting into the game or you've been playing for a while but you're taking the deep dive into competitive i strongly recommend you do some research into respawns and how they work because it's a huge element of being successful in this game and while ocu walk away with the victory the huskies did put up a good fight on the s and d and on that first round of control there as well Unfortunately, a few hiccups killing their momentum. Just an unfortunate environment to be competing in. But they put their best foot forward, and that's all you can really expect or ask of your team. 
The Huskies do still have a chance to qualify for the next playoffs. It will require them to win their next match next week. That will be at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday against Carolina University. And if the Huskies win that game, depending on how the seeding plays out for the rest of the playoffs, they'll find themselves in either the third or fourth position in the division, third place up for an LCQ spot. The Huskies not out of the runnings yet, but it is going to come down to the wire here in their next week against Carolina University. So we wish them the best of luck in their training this week as they prepare for their very important match next week. I'll be streaming it again, so I really hope to see you all in chat again next week for a match against Carolina University. Thank you so much for tuning in to the stream tonight. My name is Shadi Zedihana, head coach of the Keanu Esports Program. And I look forward to seeing you all back on the broadcast for our next Call of Duty match. Take care and have a great night.